Hi, my name is Shanadin, um, and whilst I normally make content about video games, uh, I am here today to talk to you about a digital edition of a board game. When I'm not playing video games or streaming video games or writing, I love board games. Uh, I've got quite a big collection <laughs> and was super excited when the opportunity to do a little preview video of Wingspan came my way. Wingspan is currently a top favourite of mine. It gets to the table very frequently. I'll almost always play this game if someone asks me to. So it's quite exciting to have a digital edition where I could potentially play against uh, an AI. Uh, I don't have to keep asking my friends to play the same game with me. Um, so this is the screen you see when you first load up the game. And I've got to say, it's really, really appealing. I really love how they've kept it so thematic with the actual game. There's not like a big kind of news and a kind of updates box. Um, the colours are very calm. The art is fantastic, exactly as you would expect. The art on the, the actual physical board game is all wonderful. Um, so I'm really pleased they've maintained that for this, uh, this kind of digital edition. I played one little test game. Uh, just to learn all the controls and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I gotta say it plays very nicely. I really like this. Look at that, look at that little colour. Look at it. Get it for each of these. Really like the little bit of movement, the kind of parallax background -like thing they've got going on. So let's, if you click here, when you find a bird in game, you, you kind of unlock the card to look at. Um, you get the little trivia fact, um, all the actual game information about the card, and uh, its its location as well. So. Spotted Tauhi. These birds forage by hopping backwards to uncover insects and seeds in the leaf litter. It's nice, it's really nice that they've got the trivia, they've got the, the voice uh, to read that out each time as well. Um, and it's really nice that they've got the bird calls. And I absolutely love the animation. So many digital board games are very static. Wingspan is gorgeous and having just the static art would be fine. The fact that they've gone to that little extra effort to, to make to, to give each card some movement and to include like the bird calls. Um, when you click on each card, it, it's, it's just, uh, it's really, really nice. It's just a little thing. You can filter. So let's dive into a game, shall we? The board game comes with an automata. It's really interesting that they've included the automata in the digital game, as well as the ability to have a game against AI uh, players. So let's see, I'm going to be green. And look at that, you can have different portraits. You can have this goofy little pigeon with its tongue poking out. Nice variety of people as well. Um, I think I'm gonna be a puffin. You can choose the background as well, that is gorgeous. Let's choose that background. Yeah, the art is absolutely gorgeous. Look at this movement. Just the detail is so nice. Um, let's pop one of these AIs on normal and we'll leave two on easy. Um, you can change um, this as well, the goal mat. You can swap it between um, the kind of competitive version and the, the friendly version. And you can change the order as well. I think if you have it on this, you always start first and it progresses in that direction. Whereas this one, you have a random starting player. Um, so uh, I'll have it on a uh, random order. So. Um, the AI might go first, or maybe I'll go first, we don't know. And uh, we've got this little here. So instead of having to hover over for every little tip, you can just get that up there whenever you like, which is nice. Let's start a game, shall we? So, first of all, look how beautiful this game board is. It's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> and. Uh, the movement from place to place is very uh, fluid, so this is just popping up to tell me it's my turn. And a little kind of reminder. Um, so I'm quick to start my turn. 
So you start off by choosing, you get a hand of five cards and five food, one of each type, and you choose five things in total to keep, and then you also choose one uh, bonus card to keep out of two. So, we've got one bonus card uh, that gives us points for nest box uh, birds, one that for birds that eat fish. So let's have a look at where we are at. So we've got two that will give us points for the nest box one and we don't have any that will give us points for the fish one. So uh, let's think about uh, maybe going for the nest box one. Um, for that we'll keep uh, the barred owl and the eastern phoebe. Um, and this gives us a very strong start into our um, food gaining row. This gives us a nice when activated ability, also in the food gaining room. Um, I think it's also nice to keep... Uh, so these are all pretty decent birds actually. Um, and I really like how the information is laid out. You can kind of very easily see things. You can see uh, the nest type, you can see how many eggs it takes. Like Nothing kind of explains that, but to me it seems very intuitive. Uh, and I think you can activate, yeah, you can have all the tooltips pop up as well with a, um, a hotkey. That's, I, and unfortunately we're going to lose the Cardinal and the Blue Jay, as nice as they are. And we're going to keep this one. Click to start turn. So. I like this, how it, it kind of pops up and tells you what your opponents have done click to see their board states as well. Um, this is still my hand but this is their their board and uh, they've played a bird down there. You can click to see this one as well. You can see they haven't played any birds. Um, they drew cards and then we're over to me again. So it this is quite nice as well. In fact it highlights um, the, the action that you can take. So you, you can see we've only got the very basic actions in each uh, row unlocked at the moment. And it also sort of highlights the birds you can play straight away. Uh, so we can play the Phoebe and the Owl, but we can't play the Sparrow at the moment because we don't have any wheat and we don't have enough food to convert two to one. So uh, that one's just like, I, I like how un unintrusive the, the highlighting is. like. It doesn't kind of call it out in a big way, it's just a little bit of uh, differentiation so you know what you can do, so that's really really nice. I'm going to start by playing the Phoebe, um, because that little bit of acceleration to gain the little bugs is, is nice. So let's play that, you play it by clicking on it and then you pay the cost. It, really nice again it comes up and tells you exactly what the cost is and you can pay here. But you can also if you want you can change it, If so if I decided a don't want to pay with exactly what's on the card, uh, I want to pay with two food to make up one, you can kind of do that. And you click next and then you can click next. You can tell as well where you get to a point where you can no longer undo things uh, because you've got this very obvious no more undo sign. Um, so yeah, Eastern Phoebe. Phoebes use mud to attach nests to riverbanks, rocky outcrops or human structures. So when you play a bird, when you the, the, the player plays a new bird, the, the little uh, voice does come up and read the trivia. The, the audio settings are very, very modular, um, which is really, really nice. The fact that you can adjust it as you wish, so you can turn up the master volume and then turn everything else down. Uh, you can turn these down and turn just the trivia up, turn that up. Um, you could have only uh, new birds read the trivia. You could never have the trivia if you just uh, want a quiet game. Um, the, yeah, the, so these sound out options are really, really nice. Um, I like I like it a lot. I especially like the ability to turn off the interface sounds. Some people just don't like it when you click a button and it makes a noise and, and that's fine. So you can turn that off, um, which is really nice. Um, good options for video as well, you can turn off full screen if you prefer. Um, 
game options, of course. You can turn so if your computer struggles a bit, you can turn off the animations, which is nice. And you've got controls. You can switch between what it's telling you quite easily. Um, um, so it is back round to our turn. Uh, you can see now we can't play any of these birds. The barred owl can only be played in the forest. However, we are onto the second bird in the forest, which requires an egg. Um, and th again, this requires two food, which we don't have. So, what shall we do? So we can look at the birds that are available in the uh, tray. Um, so what have we got? We've got a golden eye. Um, so this tray is actually very good for us because it, um, it has two of the um, nest types that we want and a star nest type, which is nice. If we look at the uh, round end goals, these don't actually work very well for us at all. Um, eggs in uh, this type of nest, uh, eggs in this type of nest, uh, and then eggs in the forest. So, um, picking up star nest birds is actually quite powerful with all those uh, all those nesting requirements and, and what we've got in our hand. Um, so I think it would behoove us to draw that barn swallow while we can. Um, it's also got quite a nice ability to tuck a card, um, which can be a really, really good getting points. Um, so um, it shows us here the different uh, options that are on that card drawing row. It shows us where we're at, uh, one action, one card. Um, it shows you here, if you draw from the deck, if you click here, you can, can't can undo that. And then if you uh, choose a bird here and then confirm it, you also can't undo that. Just a little addition of that, um, you know, this is the point of no return is it, really, really nice and it'll help people who are less familiar with the game, I think. It's it's almost a shame that we can't build up our, our card drawing row first. Um, I mean, we could play our, we could gather up some food and play our sparrow first um, and then draw and, and count on those birds staying put. Um, and in fact, I think I will do that. So we can put that there, we can gain a, a wheat, and this again, this is really nice, um, you know what option you're on, you know you can um, choose the dice, it tells you exactly what dice are available. Um, you can click here to do the uh, discard a card for more food, I'm not going to do that, we, we paid a food to keep these cards in hand at the start of the game, so I think that would be a poor exchange at this point. Um, so we're just going to take that wheat and, and carry on. And then uh, the power activations happen. I really like this effect to show you which bird power is currently uh, being activated. Um, and you can click between yes and no if you want to activate them or not. Um, so it kind of, if you say no, it'll say, are you sure you want to skip? I'm going to say don't skip because I actually want that. I want that little bug. On we go. Okay, so Anna's Hummingbird. Each player gains one from the bird feeder, starting with the player of your choice. Uh, so it's worked out really well for us. There's only one choice, uh, and I don't want this, so I'm actually going to re-roll, which is, is super nice to have, uh, and that will allow us to take uh, any of these. Um, so. This that we wanted to take earlier, the barn swallow, requires a bug, so I'm going to take a bug. And that's lovely. Um, it's nice that you can see clearly uh, the dice available in the bird feeder as the round goes on as well. And you get this little summary each turn. You, you can see the progress towards the end of round scoring. And you can see on this screen as well, so if you, for example, forgot to check here, uh, you can see this up here each time, which is uh, really, really nice. Food, eggs, food, sure. So we've got plenty of food now, um, but in order to play another bird here, we need to lay eggs. Um, but I think what we're up, what we're going to do is put this uh, white crowned sparrow down in the water row. Uh, it costs a bug and a wheat, which we've got. 
White hey, crowned sparrow. These sparrows like shrubby areas in many habitats, from tundra to desert. Um, so yeah, that after that's played, it immediately carries on. So someone else is is. Uh, so I think it must be this the red player, who is um, playing this Anna's hummingbird and. Uh, I am very grateful. It's uh, really, really nice to gain food without taking actions. Um, it would be nice. I wonder if I can. Yeah. Okay. Look, you can minimize that. That's nice too. You minimize that to have a look at what's available here. So, um, I think this is a nice bird. So I think maybe uh, if we can, we can take a fish. Well, we can't take a fish. So let's take another bug. It's always good to have a spare bug. It's my motto. And we move on to our next turn. Tells us what's... So they played an indigo bunting. If we ever want to look at what that is, we can just click onto the, the, that player and go to their board state. Um, so they're going to be looking for bugs and cherries in the bird feeder. We can go back to our board. I think this is the point where it's nice to draw cards. We we don't have any eggs uh, in order to draw additional cards, but I think that's that's going to be fine. Um, what we do need to consider at this point is whether we're going to move our white crowned sparrow. So we need to think about what we're going to do next. The sparrow can move only if it's to the right of all other birds. So if we play another bird to to the right of it, it's stuck in place. So we don't want to move it somewhere that we're going to play another bird soon. Um, we do want to move it to where it's going to have the most impact. Um, so I think, um, let's draw a bird, let's draw our barn swallow that we want. Um, and I think we will move the sparrow to probably the egg laying row. So you select that down here, just like just like where you select everything else. The nice sort of consistency of placement here is, is really good. Uh, so we're going to select that. You can see it's been chosen by the little tick. And uh, on we go. Um, let us re-roll that. Uh, and we'll take a berry. We don't have a berry. They've played a bird, they've laid eggs, they've gained food. So I think at this point I would like to lay eggs, which is uh, why I put the sparrow in this row, because that does enable us to spend a food to gain an additional egg. Um, we're getting quite a lot of food. Every time we take food, we're getting an extra bug. And that Anna's hummingbird has been uh, really making sure we're not low on food at all. So um, we, we've got plenty of food to do what we need to do. Uh, so we're gonna activate this um, and again click on birds to lay eggs it's really really nice um, I think so uh, the end of round goal this time is the total number of egg on birds with that specific nest type so looking at our board we don't have any birds with that specific nest type but we do have a star nest bird so we're gonna lay both eggs here um, and uh, let's discard a cherry to lay an additional egg. And now we get to move our sparrow. The next thing we probably want to do is play the swallow. And I think I'd like to play the swallow in the bottom row, the wetlands row. Um, so uh, I don't need to move the, the, the sparrow. Um, to the wetlands row and I'm not sure if we're going to be uh, needing to take food anytime soon so I don't want to remove him to this row because we do want to play the owl lair at some point uh, so let's leave him where he is so we can skip that and yeah we do want to skip this ability um, I think the music that they've gone for with this game is really really fitting it's really nice. I'm, not, I, I'm absolutely in love with how this looks. Um, I do know that some people will find this very cluttered and difficult to track though. So you do have this option here. You can have the uh, habitats overview. So it tells you 
like this, and it's much more like the uh, the player boards that you get in the game. You can just play it on this viewpoint if you like. You can switch between the kind of statistics of the bird and the uh, abilities of the bird with just this little click here. We can play it on this view. Um, but I imagine that I'll mostly play it on this just because of how, how pretty it is. Um, so yeah, we're going to play our swallow in the bottom row, in the uh, wetlands row. And we're going to pay a bug. Uh, no, we don't want to change that. Uh, Barn Swallow. Barn Swallows once nested in caves, but now favor human-made structures. There we go. Again, I really love how they've made each card have some some animation on it. I love how alive and how unstatic the whole board feels. The little blowing grass here, the little dragonflies. It's very, very appealing. So, I think what we would like to do now, right, so we've got some interesting choices. Now in order to play the barred owl, we will need to pay an egg. So let's have a look here. We can see how do we compare with the other players uh, in round one for this, this goal. And we're already behind the, the red player. Uh, so there's a chance that playing a bird will kind of take us down a little bit. However, we can see that this owl does have this same nest type. Oh no, uh, sorry, that's the nest type we want for our thing. So this one, so. Uh, we can, this has got a star nest as well. So paying an egg now, um, I think we still probably have enough capacity to take eggs a couple of times and uh, progress to, to being first in that thing, that um, goal. So let's play the owl. Click on a bird from any habitat to spend an egg, so we click on this one, it's the only place we've got eggs. Barred owl. The barred owl's haunting call sounds like, who cooks for you? not sure if I can hear it. Can you? Who cooks for you? I'm not sure. Uh, so. It does tell you how many actions you've got, but I, I clicked through it without really looking. Um, so it'd be nice if there was an easier way to see how many actions are left in a round, uh, kind of part way through the round. I'm wondering if this is it. I wonder if I'm wondering if we have literally one action cube remaining to us. Um, and if that's the case, then we do have to do this, uh, and we'll spend this bug um, to get another egg. And we want it to be on our star nest birds. Uh, we can move our sparrow. So the next thing that I'm going to want to do is draw cards. So I will move it to the water row. There we go. And we did charge ahead four points of that round which is lovely and we can see because we've invested in star nest birds which are sort of wild and count for anything um we do have the lead going into round two already uh, which is lovely uh, so we uh move on in the turn order Yeah, we now at this point want to be drawing cards. So at the end of each round, the, the tray is kind of emptied out and we get a new selection of birds. Um, so what do we have? We've got the sparrow. We've got the scissor tail flycatcher, famous for being the uh, bird on the box. Um, and we've got the violet green swallow, which I think is an absolutely gorgeous bird. 
but I think we're gonna want the chipping sparrow. And part of me is also tempted to take the, the flycatcher just because it's worth eight points, which is, is really, really good. The flycatcher is worth only one point, but it does have a very powerful ability to, to lay additional eggs. Um, eggs are worth one point each at the end of the game, so that can be very strong. So let's do that. Let's draw cards, and I think we'll draw the, the flycatcher and the sparrow. Uh, and yeah, we move on. And now we can move our uh, white crown sparrow, and I think. I think I'd like to put it in the food row because um, uh, that's what we'll be doing next. Although again, I don't think we'll be discarding cards to gain an extra food dice, so it's largely irrelevant. Um, so, do I want to move it? It's kind of... This needs the field row and this needs either the field or the forest, so it does sort of feel like it might be safer to keep it in the water row just so I know it's not going to get penned in. Um, so yeah, let's actually keep it there. Um, so this bird lets us tuck a card. Um, we can choose a card to tuck, however I'm not going to tuck either of these, I just drew them and I would like to keep them so I can play them. So yeah, we're going to skip that again. Which is a shame, tucking cards is a, is a really good source of points. However, we're just not in a position to leverage it right now until we get a better card draw engine on the go. Ah, and we get the red player playing Anna's Hummingbird again, which is nice. Um, we could take a wheat. I think it's more profitable to re-roll and hope we get a bug. Yeah, so we're gonna take a bug. Right, round two. So, let's take some, some dice. And uh, we want a bug. We need two bugs, a berry and a bug or a wheat to play the cards we've got in hand. So we're gonna take a bug and then we're gonna re-roll. Um, what do we have? We have two bugs, uh, so we'll take a wheat from here, which is nice. Um, so our owl, uh, which we kind of can't see, it's obscured behind here, but we can see here with this neat little representation uh, of the owl. Uh, we can look at a card from the deck, and if it is smaller than 75 centimeters wingspan, we get to tuck it. So let's have a look. It is a big old goose. We're not going to eat that, are we? So it gets discarded. And all players gain a bug, so yes, let's do that. Love us some bugs. Um, so it's unfortunate we didn't get a cherry in that dice roll, because then we could play all our birds, but um, such is life. Um, I think, so I think the, the fact that that player has uh, Anna, Anna's hummingbird, and the fact that we've got the all players gain a bug card, shows off an interesting aspect of the interplay in Wingspan. Um, so a lot of people think that it's a game without much player interaction, but I think what they actually mean there is that it's a game without any conflict, any direct conflict, because I think there's quite a lot of interaction. You have to be aware of what food your opponents are taking, um, you have to be aware of what powers they've got. Um, if you're very, very good at that sort of thing, you can really keep track. You can um, you can keep track of what birds your opponents are taking from here uh, and say um, say we saw an opponent take this bird and this bird that they required four bugs to, to, to play so we might reconsider whether we want to activate this ability. All the abilities are optional uh, and that's the kind of position where you have to ask yourself does my gaining a bug actually outweigh them gaining a bug as well because of how valuable you know it is for them. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's very interesting. And, and the same with Anna's Hummingbird. Um, the fact that you you get a broader choice from Anna's Hummingbird, you're, you're not um, you're not taking a specific thing. Um, but does that balance out the fact that every other player also gets gets that? Um, and and you get to choose kind of what order they take the, the dice in. Uh, so you can kind of position it so 
the person before you might be forced to re-roll or leave the dice in a position where uh, you get to re-roll so you get the, the best, the kind of pick of the bunch. Um, it's definitely interesting. And there's lots of like between round abilities. Uh, there's none none on my board at the moment, but um, there's abilities that are kind of like uh, once between rounds when another player lays eggs, you get to do something. Um, so that might encourage all your opponents to lay eggs uh, at the same time because it's kind of uh, you'll only get that ability that that kind of bonus once. Um, so yeah, I think there's, there's uh, more depth to the interplay between players than you imagine on first glance, uh, which is one of the things that keeps the game really engaging and really competitive for me amongst my friends. Um, so, what are we doing now? We are... Uh, we have these two birds in play. We can't currently play the flycatcher. Although, I mean, we could if we wanted to exchange two different food for, for the cherry, but I don't think we do at this point. But uh, we do have the sparrow, so I think the best thing to do at the moment is to play the sparrow. Um, we're gonna change that. We we need the bugs uh, for this. We don't need the wheat for this. We do have three bugs, so it might actually be better to keep the wheat in case we need it for something else. So let's do that, actually. Chipping sparrow. These sparrows generally feed on open ground, but near trees. Round two of four, four turns left in this round. So they've played a bird, they've played a bird, and they've drawn cards. I think if it if you see that your opponents have drawn cards, it's often worth looking to see what has come up whether they've drawn cards from the tray and kind of brought up some new birds for you to look at, um, which they haven't in this case. Um, I think it's uh, actually quite interesting and we should take note of the fact that there's another star nest bird here and this bird can take five eggs, which is quite a lot. Um, it can also go in the forest, which is very relevant for the uh, third round. Um, so we've got four turns left in this round. I wonder if we can... So we can take cards, we can play this bush tit, and we can lay eggs, um, which I think uh, might be very well be worth it. Let's see. So we're currently first, but I don't know if that'll stay the case. Let's have a look at what yellow's board state looks like. So they've got another five eggs they could lay on bowl nests. So we can't get complacent. Um, so yeah, I think instead of looking for the cherry to play the flycatcher, it's probably better to just uh, be a bit opportunistic and take the bush tit. So let's do that. Let's draw cards. Let's take this bush tit. And I think uh, let's draw a random card from the deck as well. So yeah, we've taken a random card. We've got the Peregrine Falcon, lovely. And then the bush tip. We can move our sparrow. Do we want to move our sparrow is quite the question. Um, I mean, we are going to be laying eggs. So I think moving to the egg laying row will be good that'll bump us up to three eggs so that's really nice uh, and now we get the opportunity to tuck under our barn swallow so i'm going to tuck this falcon um i don't see us playing it anytime soon um and by the point by the point um after we've played these uh, two cards and we're at the point where we're looking for more cards to play um there might be something better in the tray for us to take or we might have uh, drawn other cards that are kind of more relevant for us. So let's tuck that under there. Um, and uh, if you do tuck a card, you get to draw a card. Um, again, I've kind of bypassed both of these cards once already, so I am going to take a random card. I'm going to Bobolink, which is quite a powerful card. When played, lay one, bird, one egg on each of your birds with a, one of these type of nests, a little 
ground nest, I think it is. Um, and that will include star nest birds, so again that could be quite relevant. Um, although I don't think I'm going to change from, from what my focus is to get this bush tit out. And we're going to get some free food from the hummingbird. Uh, I don't want these rats, so let's reroll. And we are going to get a cherry, which is lovely. It's very helpful to play our uh, scissor tail. Left. So we are going to play this bush tit and we're going to make sure we're in our forest row. Um, so the, the cards are very quick to kind of jump up when you hover over them, which can mean you need to be quite uh, fine-tuned with your controls to kind of get the one you want to pop up, but it's not a big problem really, in the grand scheme of things. Um, so yeah, we're going to pay a bug and a wheat. And it costs us an egg as well. Um, so we only have eggs on star nest birds, so uh, it's pretty Bush relevant. Tits. We'll Bush tits live in flocks, and single adults will help couples raise their young. The choice to include the trivia on each bird card, I think, is, is a really, really nice touch. Um, I think a house rule that lots and lots of groups play with is that when you play a bird, you have to read out the trivia on the card. Um, I definitely feel like my gaming sessions have been enriched from, from doing that. So our opponents have been laying eggs, playing birds, drawing cards. Right ho. So, at this point, we are behind. Our opponent has eight eggs in their uh, bowl nest, so we are gonna lay a bunch of eggs. Um, so we're gonna focus on the starbirds first, uh, just because they're gonna continue to be relevant, and also birds in the forest habitat, because that's gonna be relevant later on. Um, we can move our swallow, our sparrow. So I'm actually going to leave it where it is because I'm going to be playing uh, laying eggs next time as well. So we'll skip that. And then we get to lay an egg with this card. Uh, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pop that up there. from Anna's hummingbird again and it's definitely a good call to take a bug. A bug is what we need to eventually play our flycatcher um, so we'll get that for free. One turn left. So we can lay four eggs at most. Let's see where we're at. So we are tied with yellow. It's yellow turns ne yellow's turn next. They can lay three eggs as well. How much capacity do they have? They have one, two, three. They have three spaces left. So if we don't lay eggs, we will draw. If we do lay eggs, we force them to also lay eggs if they would like to uh, draw with us for the first place here. Uh, eggs are worth points at the end of the game anyway, so I think it is a worthwhile uh, to do this. Um, so you're going to put one there, one there, uh, and one there. Yep. And uh, this, are we going to move it this time? I think we are, because pretty soon we're going to want to play our flycatcher. So let's take it down to our water row, um, because that'll let us draw more cards. And then we're going to lay an extra egg on our bond swallow. So 
so they didn't choose to lay eggs and we storm ahead in this uh, as well which is really nice and we're already quite far ahead uh, in round three so uh, that is is that's really nice that takes some of the pressure off it means we can uh, relax a little bit so what do we want to be doing this round it's the third round um, so maybe it's time to focus a little bit more on our own goal um, although the the cards on the board aren't really conducive to that and um, we'd be right on drawing random cards um, we can just go ahead and play the flycatcher uh, which is definitely worthwhile it's worth eight points which is huge um, I think we're gonna want to do a mixture of things more than likely so I think we'll start off by playing this flycatcher if we play the flycatcher there's a chance that one of our opponents will draw cards be between our current turn and on our next turn um, so we might get a, a wider choice um, so let's play that it knows what food we want uh, it is it is interesting that uh, it's gone berry bug bug, but here it's gone bug bug berry. Uh, I'm sure I could change that just for my own. Uh... There we go. <laughs> nope, it's just gonna change it back around. Fine. <laughs> uh, and we need to spend an egg. So uh, we've got loads of eggs up here. We've got one here, and we've got a couple down here. I'm gonna take it from here. Uh, just because we want eggs in our forest for this round. Scissor-tailed flycatcher. The mating display of these birds involves aerial acrobatics that show off the long tail. So they've played a bird, they've played a bird. They've drawn birds. Excellent. I wonder if that leaves us. No, it looks like they drew birds from the deck. So we are going to want to draw cards now. Um, so the turkey is worth eight points, which is huge. It does require three food. Um, we're not in a bad position when it comes to getting food. Um, we're always going to get a bug if we need it. And... Um, we can discard a card for an extra dice, which we could do, we're not attached to this bobble link. Um, so we, we don't need to worry too much about food. Uh, the Cerulean Warbler is really interesting as well. Draw two new bonus cards and keep one. It's, it's obviously better to do this earlier on in a game, because you have more control over what you play. Uh, kind of based around the bonuses you get. However, sometimes you might just get really lucky and draw a bonus card that you are already kind of fulfilling one or two of the um, kind of towards the, the lower end or even getting towards the upper end. Um, so we're going to draw cards and we are going to draw the Cerulean Warbler, I think. Just because this could... It's, it's a gamble, really. It could be really good for us. It might be really bad. Um, but I like to live dangerously. And we're going to draw a random card as well. Um, uh, the black turn. These kind of filtering cards are really nice early on. Um, but um, kind of not terrible later, but you know, less impactful. Uh, the, the, one of the really nice things about it is that it only requires one food to play. So yeah, we're going to take that and we're going to take the warbler. Um, are we going to move our sparrow? So... The next thing we want to do is get food. So if we move the, the sparrow up here, we can get three dice instead of two, which is actually a really, really good difference. So let's do that. And then we can activate the barn swallow. We can tuck a card. Uh, let's tuck this boba link um, and then we get to draw a card and we're going to draw this turkey. Even if we don't get to play the turkey, we know that none of our opponents are going to play it. 
Although maybe it's better to take the owl. Um, so I think the, in the differences between these cards are quite interesting. The turkey is worth 8 points, requires 3 food, um, and has no ability. However, it does have a bit more flexibility in its placement, and it can take 5 eggs, whereas the owl uh, takes 3 food and is worth 8 points. It does have an ability, but it can only take 2 eggs and it can only go in the forest. Um, so I think we'll take the slightly uh, more flexible turkey. Never thought I'd say a turkey was more flexible than anything, but uh, there we go. Um, they've incorporated Steam achievements into this game as well, which is nice for those uh, those among us who like to work towards something. It gives you kind of challenge to aim for if you play a lot of these games uh, on your own. If you're playing against the AI a lot, you can look at the achievements and go, okay, I'm going to go really heavily down a certain path so I can get this achievement. It gives the game a little, little bit more flavour uh, if you need to vary things up a bit, which is cool. So, we ha currently have no food, so really any of this would be great. Um, let's take this wheat. It's always better to take it from the split dice, because uh, you're basically taking a choice away from your opponents there. Round three or four, four turns left. And like I said, we're going to take some food this time. We need quite a lot of food to satisfy these hungry beasts. Let's see where we get to. Um, so, we are always going to get a bug. All the other players will get a bug as well. However, I think we need so much other food as well that it's going to uh, be worthwhile re-rolling and taking non-bug food from the bird feeder. Uh, yeah, and that's really nice. So. Sadly, we didn't get a cherry, which we need for our turkey. Um, but we can get uh, the wheat um, that we need. Uh, two wheat for the turkey. We need a bug and a wheat for the, the flycatcher. The warbler, sorry. Um, and uh, we already have a wheat, so we can take just the bug to, to satisfy that. We can move our sparrow. We're going to be playing the warbler in that row, so we do want to move our sparrow just to keep it going. Um, and let's put it down in the water row. Um, we can tuck a card under our bush tip. Um, so tucked cards are worth a point at the end of the game. However, if we tuck a card here, we won't get this, the additional bonus. We won't get to lay an egg on this bird because it's full. Uh, so as a result, I think I'm going to skip that um, and keep the, the cards to tuck elsewhere um, or, or later on. Uh, let's look at it. Let's see if we can feed our owl. We can't. Our owl cannot eat a hawk, so uh, we miss out there. We do want to gain our bug. get our berry that we need for our turkey which is really really helpful um, three turns left in this round I wonder how our opponents are doing for eggs again we are still miles in the lead here so no pressure to to lay extra eggs in our forest um, but we are gonna play our cerulean warbler with the food it needs and we need to pay two eggs um, so we're going to take one from here and one from here because we need them in our forest for the uh, end Cerulean of our goal. warbler between 1966 and 2015 this species lost 74 percent of its population some of the facts in this game are very sad that one was uh, they, they lost 74 percent of their population in a, a short amount of time which is is a real shame and it kind of 
it's very interesting, it draws an interesting question around games as activism, uh, which I won't go into in this video, um, but it's definitely a space worth exploring. So, birds in your habitat with the fewest birds is really interesting, you have to kind of think laterally around this one, um, because you want as many birds as you can, but you want them to be quite spread out. So our smallest habitats both have two in. Um, so ties count. So if you can play a bird here and a bird here, they'll count as uh, it'll count as three. Um, this one we've got four birds that comply with this, um, so we're already getting four points. Um, I think this one's a best bet because we are going to be playing this, which is a star nest, and hopefully this, which is a, a ground nest. Uh, so let's take the enclosure builder. so it's always worth coming to have a look at what's been revealed. Um, so we've got, again, just the art oh, is so pretty. I'm looking at these cards. Uh, it's hard to tear my eyes away from the art to kind of look at what they do. You know, I want to take this because I love the colour, um, but I don't think we'll ever get a chance to play it. Um, at least not, not this round. And in the next round, the the end goal is just the total number of birds you've got. Um, so we're going to want cheap birds. That does mean it might be worth taking this uh, Bradwing Blackbird. Um, however, we do have other things we want to do first. Um, so we'll see how this changes as we get along. Um, so we're going to play our turkey. Where do we want to play the turkey? So there's two rounds left here so we could play the turkey in this top row and lay more rags on it but I think we're already quite safe so I think playing the turkey in the middle row is probably slightly better um, having a good egg action can be a very valuable source of points late in the game so we're gonna play it here and it's gonna take those three food we'll just do that um, do we have any eggs not in the forest row? We don't. So we're going to have to spend an egg from this row, which isn't ideal, but... Um... Wild turkey. Wild turkeys were domesticated in the Americas before European contact. It's better than... Uh, better than nothing. I do love the, uh, the little turkey noise. So this player has played eggs. How do they compare? No, we're still good. Hmm. So we've got a lot of options because we're not forced into laying eggs in this uh, turn to defend our spot in the end of round rankings. We're quite um, flexible here. Um, so we could gain some food. Gaining food, probably not optimal here just because we've only got one card in hand so we don't really know what food we need. Uh, we could lay eggs, but again, like I said, we're not being forced into it. And um, we're more in need of birds and food to play them just because of that last goal at the end. Um, so I suspect what's best to do is draw cards. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so we're going to draw cards. We're going to take this red winged blackbird. It's, it's very cheap to play. It's only one food. Uh, it's quite flexible as to where we can play it. Um, so yeah, I'll take that. Although we can take a blank bird first. Excellent. So the turkey vulture takes no food to play. Uh, so we can play that wherever we want and it'll only cost the eggs. That's a very, very uh, lucky draw at this point. We'll take this as well. Uh, we can move this. I think I might move it up here. Although, will we be discarding cards to get more food? I don't think we will. 
Um, I might leave it where it is. It might be time to lock our sparrow in place. Uh, we're going to be wanting to play cards in this bottom row quite soon. So, um, yeah, it might be time to just stop uh, thinking too hard about the sparrow. Uh, are we going to tuck under the swallow? No, I don't think we are. And we're not going to tuck a card. Pretty confident we're gonna win this round goal though. Yeah, by quite a way. I think our lead when going into this round probably uh, put put anyone off from challenging it too much. So round four is just the total number of birds. We are ahead, but only by one. Uh, so it's very easy for yellow or red to come and, and kind of claim the, the top spot here, which is why I'm glad we've got those two uh, or three easy to play birds. So let's go, last round. Um, yeah. Free food again. either of these but we don't have the opportunity to re-roll um, so we'll just take a bug okay that's interesting another hummingbird uh, I'm not sure what's uh, I wonder if that last hummingbird action was from the end of the previous round um, because I can see now that the portraits have changed order. That's, that's a weird one, I'm not sure what's going on there. So, um, But it's worked out really nicely for us because we can now take a wheat, which will pay for our blackbird. Yeah, there we go. Everyone's laying eggs. we're gonna do is pop down this turkey vulture. Doesn't cost any food, which is so nice. And yeah, we're gonna take eggs from up here. Turkey vulture. Turkey vultures can projectile vomit to defend themselves. Same TBH. The last round can go so quickly. Everyone has locked onto their strategy, know what they need to do, they know what goal they're aiming for, and um, you have so few actions. You only have five compared to eight in the first round. It goes so quickly. Um, and we're going to put these in this row. Um, it's going to cost us another egg, but that's fine. Red winged blackbird. Blackbird flocks can include hundreds of thousands of birds. Hundreds of thousands of birds. That's a lot of birds. Wow. Excellent. We'll take a grain, a wheat, whatever it is. I wonder if... Hmm. That's... Oh, I know what might be happening. Uh, so... Let's... So it became our turn, so the game skipped us back to our uh, board. But uh, let's have a look here. Um, so they've got Anna's Hummingbird. And they've got the Ruby-throated Hummingbird. Ah, that's, that's where my confusion came in. There we go. Two similar birds. Um, one of the things I really like is how birds that are similar biologically are also similar mechanically within the game. I, th I think that's really, really cool. It could have been so easy to just arbitrarily distribute the uh, the powers on the birds and the mechanics, um, but the fact that they've, they've made it so that similar types of birds do similar things I think is really nice. Um, oh, we've got two bugs, let's, let's pay with a bug. 
couple of eggies. Black tern. These terns build floating nests out of marsh plants. Mm -hmm. Two turns left. Interesting. So here we've got to really ask ourselves what is going to be most valuable for those two turns. We have two food. We have three food left. So we could take a bird and play it. Unfortunately, uh, none of these birds are very high scoring. And uh, if we take birds, we can only play one. Um, like we can't, th there's none here that let us play more than one. We actually only have one space in each of our habitats. So even if we drew a bird that allowed us to play an additional bird in the same habitat, we couldn't do it anyway. Um, so it, it might not be worth doing that. What it might be worth doing is just laying eight eggs. That'll be eight points. Um, we'll also gain uh, two eggs from the sparrow. Um, it's not the most exciting last two turns, um, but it is point efficient. Um, so we'll do that. Yep. that that's nice. I, uh, I clicked the action, but I didn't choose where to lay the eggs, but the game uh, quite helpfully reminded me, hey, you've not actually put these eggs down anywhere yet. Um, so that's really good. Uh, no, let's not. We're not going to be playing any more birds. We don't need any more food. So uh, let's not give our opponents any more food either. And yeah, we're going to get seven points here. I'm going to get seven points here. So that's really, really nice. Um, we're ahead here by two. Um, I think with only uh, one turn left, it'll be hard for our opponents to catch up. Um, just take a fish there. We don't really mind. Um, let's re-roll. Let's take a bug. Last turn of the game. Yeah, lots of egg laying. Let's uh, put some eggs down here. Skip taking the, the bug. And we've got one more egg to lay, and let's pop it on the warbler. Sorry, Owl. Sadly, our Owl is going to be left without an egg at the end of the game, but um, I'm sure they'll live. There we go, roaring to victory. Um, so we can slowly watch this count up, or we can just click to skip it ahead. Um, and wow, that is really interesting. Yellow player on 97 points, which is an incredibly high score. Where did they get all their points? They got so many points from their birds. So we had a lot of birds, but they were worth relatively few uh, points. Um, our bonus points, our bonus cards were, were valuable and our end of round goals were valuable. Um, but yeah, their their birds were just extremely points heavy, so uh, they they brought it right over there. So we can have a look at the overview, which is really nice. So we can um, have a look at yellow's board state. Yeah, so they were worth eight there. They had a nine point bird there. They had a nine point bird here. Yeah, so you can see that the average value of their birds is very very high, and they've got six points from their bonus here as well. Um, yeah, so well played yellow. Um, go back here. Um, so we can just go back to the menu. We can replay with the same players. If you want to just quickly skip back into another game and have a look at the details. Ah, so that's just that for the details. I think we'll keep the details on. Yeah, so they got 57 points for their birds, which is absolutely huge. Really, uh, it's where they pulled ahead of us. Um... We got zero points here for food on cards. They got three. We got two points for tucked cards and there. Uh, yeah, so interesting. Um, I think that is a very interesting conclusion to this game. It really goes to show 
even if you look like you're ahead on your bonus points, on your end of round goals, um, there are other things that other people can do that can really pull them ahead of you. And I think that's very worth bearing in mind. Um, so yeah, this game I think is absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you like midway sort of action taking games like this, um, then yeah, I highly recommend it. Uh, uh, a lot of digital card game implementations can fall quite flat, but they've really put in a lot of effort to make this an interesting uh, experience. Just from the little details like the animation, the gorgeous background, the sounds. Um, yeah, the the level of quality is, is really, really high and I'm really pleased. Um, because yeah, like I said at the beginning, this is one of my favourite games, and I'm I'm excited to get to play it a lot more on on the on the computer. Um, yeah, thank you so much for letting me have this opportunity to record this review. <laughs>